what's the main message? If we had to sum up, uh, what would you tell that person who is watching us today? Oh, I don't know. Is there a lesson here? Maybe believe women when they tell you things about themselves. Maybe don't always side on patriarchy side. I don't know. Pick a side <laughs> and be happy for it. Pick yeah. a side and be happy for it. Be proud of... Don't be proud. Be ashamed. Being with if the you choose, victim. If you choose to be on the side of the abuser, then you should be ashamed. Salut tout le monde. No, that's it. That's not good. <laughs> Why am I speaking in French? Because you're francophone? Yeah, but, you know, our podcast is in English. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> was a little bit confusing to start with. Welcome, welcome again to our podcast, The Feminist Family. We are The Feminist Family. I am Pamela. And I'm Corey. Yes, and uh, we are very happy to be back again here mm -hmm. with you to share. And we appreciate uh, that you watch um, the previous episodes. Last time we talked about respect yep. as a feminist family. And this evening uh, we discussed a lot on uh, what topic we wanted because there are many topics. We're going to yeah. try. We're going to try because we had a lot that we would love to unpack with you, right? Of course. What would you want to start on? Well, I think we were going to start tonight on uh, a story that you heard on Twitter, I believe it was, where we were talking about uh, a person who was a, an abuse victim and the narrative that came from the media said that they were beaten by their husband because... They couldn't get pregnant. That's a shocking story that um, we've been reading uh, since uh, yesterday um, of a lady. We saw a picture uh, of her having bruises on her body. And you can see that she is, um, she's been beaten. And it was said, uh, in fact, that she was beaten by uh, her husband. Right. And what shocked me, because we are so used to those kind of stories, but something that shocked me more and more uh, is um, the emphasize um, or not mm -hmm. of what they call the reason why uh, right. her, her husband or her partner beat yeah. her. <clears throat> The reason it's because I follow what is happening uh, um, in some other countries, like in France, on social media, there is a great organization that is, uh, you know, um, putting out there like all the numbers of feminists, for example. And I follow the conversation there right. regarding um, uh, marital abuse, you know, uh, or family abuse and something that doesn't come. Uh, when it's about in France, is the reason why. Right. Um, you're not reading that um, this person hit his wife because uh, she drinks a lot or uh, she cheated or uh, any reason that they can bring. Right. Um, but something that is pretty systematic where I come from mm. with the people that I interact with, uh, my Burundian people that I love <laughs> is giving the reason of why that person has been beaten. If you say, you know, what is what, you know, when there is a discussion regarding um, like a marital uh, violence, like abuse, right. uh, or s there is a story of a lady who uh, been, you know, uh, beaten by her husband. <laughs> Each time you're going to hear this question, why? Why did he do that? Mm. It's like there is a why that people are either ready to accept or condemn. Yeah, yeah, there's of, a justification. There is a justification. Why? So in this particular case, I'm not giving names because it's really something that is recurrent, you know, that mm. 
I have seen, and people can verify with themselves, and this I found this very concerning. Mm-hmm. It's they talked about this man who beat that why uh, his wife because she could not get pregnant, and then the conversation turns to we get men who are shocked for the reason that mm. he's been hitting because they they're gonna be saying like, but she's it's not her fault if she cannot get pregnant right. it can also be the man's fault and then the conversation goes to that stupid reason right of beating as though if it her. were a good as, reason uh, exactly <laughs> that's what comes to my mind each time that's what really comes to my mind so what reason would you accept that it's okay to beat your wife <laughs> they are re- their reason what I observed is really um, it, you know, it calls like a, a, on the uh, victim shaming, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Going to find the reason why this person is a victim out of the fact that someone abused her. Right, right. Yeah, because if you're willing to accept that there is a reason that she deserved it, I don't then then you're looking for an excuse like then you have to shame her you have to find a way to blame her yeah. for her own abuse yeah exactly yeah exactly for mm-hmm. me there mm-hmm. is no acceptable reason for a man to beat his wife no why because first of all we're talking about an adult between adults if you need to go through fighting with hands, mm. you know, trying to hurt someone physically, even verbally, mm. you know, mm-hmm. you start to be out of reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right? It's, it's not, yeah, no, I agree. Is it your issue of passing your message to someone? Yeah, are you not communicating Verbally, you can, because human can talk. We are not animals, you know, we have a language that we use. Yeah. Yep. Right. So we're talking about people who can communicate using words yep. or using all other ways. And you prefer that your message passes through punching, violence, punch, violence. Yeah. And the society then they, sort of like um, accept yeah. that there, there are reasons. Yeah. There are reasons. Yeah. When there really aren't. Right. Yeah. There is no good reason why anyone, like, short of self-defense, should be hitting another person, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. We need to talk about just the fact of hitting, because that's what is damageable for the the woman, right? Yeah. And can there be any reason for that? No. No, there can't, really. Like, you think, like, even if you're doing it in self-defense, like... You don't beat somebody. You might hit them one time in self-defense. But, yeah. But you don't, like, keep beating them. You don't keep hitting them until they're, you know, bruised everywhere. You don't, you don't abuse them and hit them in uh, multiple times. You, 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 in self-defense, you should be diffusing the situation. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and that's assuming that he's defending himself. In, in like, <laughs> so that's the only time that any such a thing would be acceptable. So if you're talking about like, she didn't do as you say, she didn't do this, you know, something that you wanted done. She didn't listen. She would argue with you. Mm-hmm. Even if she calls you names, even if like, the, if, there's even no. Even if she's drunk there's and no she's reason. coming and doing really nonsense. Yeah. Like being a house, nonsense person. The- that isn't hurting you is not a reason to hurt her. No, no. And the f- for me, the fact that each time they, they bring the reason, for me, it's a sign. Tell me what you think about it. For me, it's a sign that that society is excusing and taking like uh, the, 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 the problem from um, the actual abuse, violence, mm-hmm. To um, like other things because we need to hear his version to why he right. did that or uh, you know should we listen to a man who beat his wife 
on him explaining why he did that. Should we listen to him? No, no, uh, no. <laughs> there's no good. There's no good space there to have a, a a reason to beat your wife. Like we're talking about. Like like I say, we're not talking about diffusing the situation. We're not talking about defense. We're talking about somebody who beat their wife. It's they, attacking. They, they yeah, that's physical violence attacking somebody, and you can't say that that's okay. Who can help that person? I don't think that it's just regular people, normal people. Maybe that person needs, um, I don't know, well, medical. I'm, I'm sure there's they, many. They are, you know, I'm uh, sure there's many confounding factors, including culture, including uh, poverty or or wealth or relative, you know, relative economic status or or re- you know, a variety of things. This is something I'm like. Mm-hmm. But I I tend I tend to look for systemic reasons for things, right? But when it really boils down to it, those are only valid if we can if we can solve them. <laughs> Short of like, you know, like so what? I don't have a good solution, right? But I do know that it is systemic when your society is making excuses for a man to beat his wife. What and that is a systemic mean? issue, right? What shocked me even more with uh, with that case is that all over the place there is uh, the picture of that lady with bruises, right? right? But we don't have any picture of the guy who did that. Yeah. For me, that's another way of victim shaming. Yeah. Because everybody is going to remember about her being in that situation. Um you know, everybody who knows her now, you know, saw her. Yeah. Uh, but who saw the guy who beat yeah, that's right. her? Who is recognizing him at work? Who is recognizing him in the street? Maybe yeah. he's just in another meeting and uh, discussing with other parents who don't know that he is her husband. Yeah. I believe that um, the best way to avoid victim shaming because here there is a way there are obviously things that show that you know yeah um we should be sharing the picture of that guy yeah we should be sharing the pictures of the yeah there should be like that who do that there should be like an abuse shaming we need to abuser uh, shaming yeah we need to shame these abusers we need to shame them yeah instead of Instead of always focusing so much on the victim and like, uh, like trying to, you know, find a reason and justification for the abuse, you need to like be like, okay, what is wrong with this guy? Yeah. And like find, you know, focus on him and try and like shame him. And like, it's the same thing. In a sense, it's the same thing that we did when there was a bunch, you know, there was like that, uh, that, rally in charlottesville where all the white supremacists were hanging out and, and uh defending the statue of a white supremacist mm. and so mm. then when people could go online and find their pictures because they took pictures they could find their faces they contacted their bosses they had to face real world consequences instead of you know for being this kind of person and an, abu- an abuser should face real world consequences mm-hmm. for being an abuser mm-hmm. Like, I don't believe in carceral justice, but I do believe that there's a societal way of dealing with this. Like, we could we could shame them. We could – I mean, we do have jails and, and, and there could be some, some way of, like, we dealing with We should be having this. their picture, their picture with the picture of the victim. Yeah. So that everyone has Absolutely. in their mind that whatever they are going – This is not a going, person I want to see. This is a new etiquette. This yeah. is what this person is doing. Yeah, I don't want to know this person. I'm not going to w- spend time with this person. Yeah, we need to be sharing the, their yeah. names, their picture, where they walk. Like, they need to be shamed. Yeah. yeah there is, they, they, yeah, there is mean, no – Does your the business there is want the picture, an abuser there? Yeah, the, and especially the moment there is a picture of his wife outside, like a, with yeah. bruises. No, yeah. I am calling on like a, you know her brothers. Does she have brothers? Does she have sisters? Does she have cousins? Like the best way to be an ally of someone who is a victim, mm. 
like no we cannot be just sharing pictures you know and uh just crying on her oh poor her who is beaten by her man uh because she cannot uh have a kid yeah no well and i think like you say like the fact that her picture is out there is like doubly problematic like they uh the court systems here they don't show they often they'll have a, a publication ban right of certain things because they don't want the victims to be su- extra suffering, you know. But if her vi- if her information is already out there, if her name and her picture is already out there, then the only person who's defended by not having the abuser out there is the abuser. She might not be the person who put the picture out. Yeah. Maybe she shared that picture with, you know, it goes pretty quickly now with the uh, social media, yeah. you know. Yeah. Maybe she can share that with a person that she trusts and that person leak that picture because that person is shocked or that person is, you know, want to advocate for her, want to find help for her. You know, there are so many reasons that that picture can go out. Yeah. But for me, the question is, the moment that picture is out, mm. mm-hmm. It need the, the that person who gonna put that picture out should make a collage and put the picture of the guy who did that. Yeah. yeah. If anyway the picture gonna go out, then let the picture go out for a real reason. Let let it be the time of that guy who can beat his wife to be known by everybody. Yep. Why keep the secret? Nope. Why keep the secret? What I hate is that he might be going and uh, be presented, you know, uh, participating in other, you know, uh, community activities or right. at work as someone who is responsible. Right. Yeah. yeah. I grew up seeing that. I grew up seeing like a people who are abusing their wives, yeah. getting the recognition and I find that like a pretty concerning and I'm like, yep. if I could, I, I would go and erase in the head of everyone and try to place in their mind something else that say, whenever you are with someone who is abusing his partner, don't be friend with them. Yeah, no, that's right. Because being friend, I'm sorry. If you are being friend, you are accomplice. Yep. That's how I consider. For yep, me, that's, that's right. how I see things. You are a complacer. If you cannot not st- not take a stand, yeah. The moment there is abuse that is known, if you don't take a stand, you are standing with the abuser. That's right. That's it. Yeah, that's right. It's. I mean, that's a very popular or well-known quote, right? Is like silence it means you're standing on the side of the oppressor, mm-hmm. or silence in the face of oppression. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and yeah. that's abuse is oppression. Mm-hmm. So if you say nothing, if you're standing on, you know, if you're just not making, you know, like I say, taking a stand, then you are standing on the side of the abuser. Just how it is. And yeah. this is a conversation we have uh, even regularly. in our case. Uh, <laughs> regularly. That's a conversation that we have. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like <laughs> uh, anyone who is a friend of, my ex who was abusing me is not a real friend is not a friend of mine yeah. you know it's someone i know yeah it's someone i know that he tolerate that yeah through his friends is it doesn't mean that i hate that person i right. don't have time to be hating no, everyone no. who was doing that you know every everybody be who they want to be but right that's the thing that's, is like you know how far you can trust them yeah, exactly. For me, you are a person who who, who does that. And yeah. that's not an insult. That's not even devaluating. But if you your are one of value, those people, I you do, know? if you, if you are one of those people, I do feel like you should be ashamed. If you're one of those people who stands on the side of the oppressor, if you're standing with the abuser, I do feel that you should be ashamed of yourself. I hope that's one that people some people will be ashamed. Honestly, I yeah. hope. But the way I consider things it's Okay, you, you, you pick. Well, I, I believe anyway, you know, there are so many people in the world. I don't really, I, 
I'm not mad at someone showing me how they are. Yeah. Really. They yeah, can be you don't bad. have to. They can be, yeah. they can be bad. You don't have right? to waste your time being mad at them, but yeah. But you know who they are. And yeah. that's it. Like, now I know who you are. And I'm not necessarily going to fucking spend time with you. I'm not going to work on our relationship. You're not somebody that I'm going to show any trust in or any care for. Like, I'm not with you because you're not with me. <laughs> I mean, that's it. if I had to choose, like, yeah. you know, it, it's good when people show you how they are. I always say this, like, if people show you how they are, believe them. Yeah, that's right. Right? Believe them. So I just believe those people. Yeah. You you are just a person who um, accept to put that with abuse. Yep. We see this in all kinds of, of situations. Like you say, like uh, maybe maybe the people who vote for racists in elections, maybe they aren't racists themselves, but they don't mind it. It's not a it's not a deal breaker. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, you know. There are people who can put up with racists. Yeah. You can totally just be fine with them, I guess. If you're totally fine with it. That's good great. For you. Good for you. I guess. <laughs> Some of us have standards you know, when we deal with people. You, <laughs> it's okay. Everybody here, like, it doesn't mean that any, like, and no one is perfect, right? No, absolutely. No one is perfect, absolutely. but... But there's be a difference that. between expecting somebody to be perfect and having standards, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, my love, that mm-hmm. was uh, uh, it. We wanted to talk about shaming the victim. Yeah. We talked about it. I guess so. Yeah, we kind of laid it out, I think. Yeah. You wanted to talk about something else. Well, I thought, I thought it was relevant to our life because um, now that we are child free i suppose we <laughs> we have uh you know as a bunch of free time um a lot. and you found that you like to go out dancing and and like to go out to uh sing karaoke and i am still a home person and that's totally fine for us i think but i i i think we have a, a different dynamic than many couples. Like, um, and I guess we were going to talk about like, uh, you know, insecurities and like jealousy as, as a tool of patriarchy mm-hmm. and like control uh, over your partner and, and how that works for people. So I don't know. We were kind of talking upstairs about how you still felt like because I'm home, so when I'm the nights that I'm home, but you still want to go dancing, you still are conflicted about whether or not to go out or not. <laughs> yes, because um, the moment I became uh, a mom, mm-hmm. like I feel like it's something that uh, made me accept the fact of staying more and more home. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was always a person who likes to be home. I love to be home, but I also like to go out at some occasions. And yeah. I love to dance. I love to, you know, meet new people. But um, as a mom, I find that it's something that was pretty hard because also what I went through, right? Mm-hmm. Um First of all, I got a baby, and then two months after that, we became refugees. Uh, as a refugee in Rwanda, uh, we didn't have money to be going out, or uh, you yeah. know. And anyway, she was two months. Yeah. Then I arrived in Canada. Like she was one year, but then I was alone. Yeah. And so on until now, actually. So I've been in a situation where I was like. Unable to go out. <laughs> going <laughs> out, going party, and, uh, you know, like, just having fun, really. Yeah. Um, it's something that was costing me a lot with kids. Because yeah. there is uh, the day I'm going out, and then uh, maybe the day after, you know, the hangover. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do much. But if you have kids, you know they're going to be waking you up. Yeah. 
and you need to take care of them anyway. I spent many so, a morning laying on the couch while the, the Sir Kinsella watched whatever was on the TV. <laughs> Yeah, but I had to wake up and then I found that, you know, and then I need to push everything I would have done that day to another day. It was the cost was a lot and I was okay with it. You know, that comes. I accepted that something that comes with, yeah. uh, you know, being a mom mm -hmm. because anyway, life is pretty long. We don't know till when, but honestly, I got time before I get kids to party yeah. and, you know, go out. Yeah. I wasn't expecting <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. to have this time again, but um, here I am, like uh, without kids, and um, it's I feel that you know in yeah. me, like it starts since morning, and uh, if it's the weekend, I'm like, oh, I wanna go out, <laughs> yeah, I wanna go party, but obviously it's not your thing, no. Nope. Um, because we were not going, it changes a little bit our dynamics because I was never like that since we met. Not really, no. You never saw me partying or, uh, you know. Um, so I have no issue going out and party until whenever I want if you are working mm -hmm. and you are not home. Um, if you are home, um, I feel like I can go, but as I was telling you last time, I was like, something comes to my mind and, you know, it's like a question, like, uh, really, is it good if I go and leave him home? And, um, uh, I don't want him to come with me. I don't want you to come with me. I would be no fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> I am not fun in a nightclub. I can guarantee He's that. not coming with me in a nightclub and, uh, you know, and, and it's better than like yeah. that, yeah. I think, you no. know. But leaving you home and going out, like, was making me question. And I'm so glad that we can talk about those kind of things because you, you were like, go. Well, I wasn't pushing you out the door, but I was No, you said if you want to go, you can go. Yeah. Of course, if you want to go, you can go. <laughs> but in my mind, I, you know, the moment you said but. If you want to stay with me, then... I'm happy to have you stay I'm with happy me. To... <laughs> <laughs> of course, I would love to spend time with you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I was like, of course I want to spend, uh, you know, spend time with you. Of course I want to go out. Yeah, it's, it's a conflict. And... <laughs> yeah, but... But... It's not about insecurities right? right it's something that is coming out of a place of uh you know having time with you yeah yeah you which know, is fair. having good time with you because you just came back from work and yeah and i love spending time with you right yeah, for sure it's not because how dare me go out <laughs> without you yeah and no i don't know because uh, yeah i'm never gonna worry about you know whether or not you're at home or out like i'm always gonna be like yeah do what you want to do which is i mean if you but if you ask my honest thing do you want me to stay home and, and hang out with you of course i'm gonna say yeah i want you to stay home and hang out with me yeah but that's tricky oh <laughs> but it's good because you are saying what you have on your that's mind that's what i right? want right like yeah i'm not I'm not saying it to be, you know, controlling or manipulative. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what I want. And honestly, I'm not going to be mad or hurt or jealous or, you mm -hmm. know, insecure if you go out and do the thing you the, – and have fun, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you're not um, – it's not like you're going to be like, oh, I would prefer that you stay with me. And then I go, and then when I come back, you would be... Mad. Mad. Yeah. Because deep in you, that's not what you I wasn't really wanted. okay with you going. You would have expected <laughs> that I say, okay, if you want me to stay, I'm going to stay. No, you're not going to be... No. No, I wasn't going to be mad. I just... I'm happy to spend time with you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, think, I think that that's something that, you know... A lot of people do get caught up in that kind of trick trap kind of thing, right? Like they get, because so many 
men are insecure about their partners going out without them. Mm-hmm. Why are they insecure? What do you think they are insecure? Well, we've experienced this a, a little bit, right? Because you said men don't believe that you don't want to sleep with somebody. You're out in the club just to have a good time. They don't believe you when you tell them that. <laughs> so you have to tell them that I have, I, I'm, I'm, I, you have to tell them that you're interested in women, not men. <laughs> you can't even tell them that you have a partner at home because they won't listen. So that's why men are insecure. But the reason, but those, so it's the same men that are insecure that are the men who won't listen to you at the club. It's not me saying that. It's me. <laughs> like those are the same guys. So the guys who are picking, trying to pick you up at the club because they don't believe that you can, that you're there just for fun, they're the ones who don't want their girls to go out to the club. And we meet them. <laughs> we meet them. Yeah. In fact, when I'm going out in a nightclub, like uh, that's something that's all the time. If I go out. At least one time I'm going to have to say that, oh, I'm not interested in men. Yeah. No, you and me, we're just hunting. Same girls. <laughs> <laughs> to have peace, you know, because... Because men don't listen. Men going to see you in the nightclub, going to see me, and they're going to think that, okay, who is the man who is attaching her? Are we seeing a man... Right. Around her, who is like securing around her. If no, then, then we can go game. and try. Yeah, that's fair game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then we can go try. Plus, she's smiling to us. She's dancing yeah. with us. Mm-hmm. What is that exceptional about me dancing on the music that we are all hearing? We are all dancing. You are dancing in front of me. I'm going to dance with you. You want me to be... <laughs> so that you're not going to love me? Yeah. Of course I'm smiling to you, you know? Yeah, you Of course fun. I'm dancing. I'm having fun. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that, hey, I'm open. Or I, I should not, you know, how? I need to put... You need a, a button or a shirt that says... <laughs> I, I Closed for business? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so far, what I find to be working each time yeah. is I love girls. Yeah. I'm not interested in men at all. It's it's so, I don't know. It's so strange to me because I, I remember when I was young mm-hmm. and we went out. And, of course, young men, you're out looking for girls that might be interested. But mo- more than once, I watched a guy get pissed off when girls rebuffed him and declare they must be lesbians. <laughs> as though as though we're all irresistible in the bar. How dare yeah, like, <laughs> how dare she? How dare she simply not want you, to be not want to be with you. Yeah, I want to be with her. What am I what is wrong with her? <laughs> it's It's uh, quite the mindset. It's uh, I don't even really understand it. I think that if anyone needs to cure the insecurities, it's really men. Oh, yeah. It starts by believing those women that you meet when they say, no, they don't want you. you, (laughs) I'm just here having fun. (laughs) Oh, okay then. Yes. Have fun. (laughs) <laughs> because that way, you're going to believe that your wife too is going to say no, right? Yeah, that's right. If you believe the women there, then why would your your wife, she's going out, she's having fun. It's not because she's on the prowl. It's just because she's out having fun. <laughs> and this is another thing too that men don't get, is that the makeup, the dresses, these aren't actually for us. <laughs> They're not to put on a show. For us. <laughs> this is, this. You just reminded me of something, my love. Oh, my God. Thank you for bringing that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, like, this is the thing. Like, men seem to think that women only dress that way because they want to attract us. Yeah, but you know what? 
I think that women do that. I think that we oh, do sure, that. Oh, sure, maybe some and do, but... The moment I discovered that, I felt so ashamed. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, I don't and, know. Yeah. And it's something that is changing mm. me more and more in my way of choosing how I'm going to be dressed. Yeah. Because, yeah... I found that, you know, um, there is that thing of, uh, getting dressed not for me, but for a- attracting who, you know, if there oh. is any person that I need to attract is, it's me. Yeah. Cause do I need more men than you? <laughs> if there is a person I need to attract is you, right? Which is not that hard at this point. Like, I love you. So it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I saw, a, um, it was like a, uh, a reel. It was pretty, uh, short, but okay. this comedian was, uh, in front of the mirror and, uh, talking to herself and, uh, you know, the person in the mirror would talk to her mm. and be like, uh, you know, um, like what you're wearing, is it comfortable? Right. You know? And the person in the mirror would be like, no, it hurts. Like there is, <laughs> <laughs> this and this, you know, these shoes hurts, like, uh, the, the way I'm dressed and, you know, there are things where you're going to be like, that's not comfortable, right? Yeah. Um, we women, like, we suffer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we suffer a lot. And, also- and at the end, you're like, why are you suffering exactly? If you ask yourself that question, is it to please who to get if a particular person wants to dress a particular way to hook up with somebody and attract somebody to hook up with, or even if, you know, because you don't meet your love of your life at a nightclub, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not? It's just not a thing that happens. Why? Because nightclubs are for dancing and not talking. Yeah, it dep- yeah, depends. Upon you don't meet depends. the love of your life unless you can have a conversation with them. <laughs> Uh, really? Yeah. No, I depends upon no. the, the nightclub. I think it depends. My upon point nightclub. is, yeah, okay. No, I don't. I don't. Depends upon nightclub <laughs> because honestly, like I met my first husband in the nightclub. Yeah. So mm. the love of your life, eh? No, yeah. <laughs> we're not together anymore. But it's not because we met in the nightclub. <laughs> but he was the love of my life for a moment. Yeah, for a moment. And things changed, but we met yeah. in the nightclub. Yeah, so that's yeah, people can. That's strange. It depends upon like some nightclubs. I don't have see a, how like you a... can do that. I don't see how you can meet oh. and, without having a conversation. You have okay. to be able to talk to the people. That nightclub. That was in Burundi, and um, there is a a tree. Mm. And because nightclub in Burundi, there is a part that is outside because, you know, the weather is good. We are Uh, not protected. So, um, like the bar, there is a a huge tree, and then the bar is around the tree. And then people are dancing at another place, like right in front, basically. But, um, yeah, we met at the bar. I think you this can is a talk. mistake. It depends. No, no I, I think this is a mistake. Think they changed like uh, the, the music, like uh, they they put the mu- music too loud, maybe now or the, the, I don't no know. When I was like, when uh, I was in my twenties, the music was just as loud. And just it, as loud. And everybody uh. who thought they made they found love in a nightclub ended up fucking not. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but okay. Everybody made the mistake of thinking you could find your love by picking them up in a bar. No. It's not how it works. It can Inebriated. work. It can work. You you don't know love. Like uh, Your first drunken conversation is not the best conversation you it think depends. It No. No, it's I'm silly. the proof that it can work. I met that's where I met my first husband. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. what was your point my point was that if somebody wants to dress up and attract somebody mm-hmm. then that's their call and there's nothing na- actually wrong with that Yeah, but that isn't necessarily the norm and you shouldn't assume that that's what it is as, an ind- as a person you can and uh, even flirting or hitting on somebody at a club like that is okay 
Mm-hmm. Asking if somebody's interested is okay. But if somebody says no, then you have to take no for an answer and you have to acknowledge that person isn't interested in me. You and need to do it. that for you. Have to you. you need to do that first for you because that's what's going to help you also uh, oh, yeah, trust yeah, other people right. because, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you're If you're willing to accept that you are in a bar having fun for the sake of having fun and not necessarily for a hookup, mm-hmm. then you should accept that other people also have their own brains and their own intentions. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm-hmm. And once you can accept that for all the women in the world, then you can accept that your wife or partner is going to go out and have fun. Because you and saw how it's done. You have right? no reason to be insecure. Because you saw other women saying no. Yep. And you did that. And also, you need to be talking to your friends. <laughs> because if it's just only you doing that. Yeah. No, you have to keep the information rolling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. The Understand moment, yeah. perspective. The moment you see that, okay, a person can say, a girl can tell you no, and you can accept it. If you see your friend who is not accepting the no from another girl, like, it's okay to tell him that, you know yeah. what? Dude, you're being a jack. No is no, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's something to share yeah. between That's our right. friends. Okay, so, my love. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about something else? I don't know. What do you got? I think we're good. I think that we're good. We're going to leave it for here. What? What's the main message? If we had to sum up, uh, what would you tell that person who is watching us today? Oh, I don't know. Is there a lesson here? Maybe believe women when they tell you things about themselves. Maybe... Don't always side on patriarchy side. I don't know. Pick a side <laughs> and be happy for it. Pick yeah. a side and be happy for it. Be proud of. Don't be proud. Be ashamed. Being with if the victim. Choose, if you choose to be on the side of the abuser, then you should be ashamed. No, be proud of you. It's okay to be proud of being on the side of an abuser. Ugh. That shows that you are an abuser yourself, mm. but s- there is no middle. Yeah. There is no middle. You cannot stand between the two. Yeah. No. What's the quote again? Like, uh, you are either with the victim or you are. Yeah. Or you're with the against, oppressor. You know, you are with the oppressor, right? Yeah. You need to pick a side. You cannot stay in the middle. Yeah. Okay. And no is no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's okay to go out and dance. And if you watched me tonight and you are uh, around Regina and Saskatchewan <laughs> <laughs> and want to go out for a Friday, <laughs> on a Friday is the best day. Yeah. Um, I'm free to go out. Hmm. Karaoke and dancing. Karaoke and dancing. I am never free to go out on Fridays. <laughs> you can come to karaoke. You like karaoke? Yeah, karaoke is all right. I don't sing, but I like... like. But you like it. You, you like to come with me. I like to see other people having fun. That's nice. You don't like nightclub. And honestly, if um, I had an issue on my leg or uh, for some reason I could not dance, I would not want to go with other people in a nightclub. And watch them dance? And watch them dance. If I am in a nightclub, I'm not there to stand up and discuss with anyone, you know. Yeah. I'm there to dance. Yeah. And I'm going to start to dance the moment I enter until I go out and I will stop to dance because I'm ordering drinks. That's yeah. it. I'm not discussing. I'm not talking. <laughs> That's not what is taking me there. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay. So i um, pretty happy uh, to be here. If you watched until here. I hope that you hit the subscribe button Mm -hmm. (laughs) before you leave and you can leave us a thumbs up. You can uh, leave us a comment and tell us what you think about what we said. If it's things that you like or um, things that you think differently uh, than us, 
and I'm sure I'm sure there's lots of people who do. Um, yeah, what's our social medias? You sure about what? I'm sure there's lots of people who think differently than us. Of course. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the word, right? You can find me on Instagram, Pamela Kazikari. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I'm skeptic- at Skeptical Lefty almost everywhere. And uh, yeah. You can also find me on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> Ikigata Nyakazi. <laughs> <laughs> the link is in the show notes. Exactly. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>